Hi guys, it's Alta. Welcome to my TV guide all about what I am watching. And I just finished watching episode 11 of Sleepy Hollow entitled The Vessel. Holy crap. Could they have made a more perfect episode for me? So I have to kind of keep my voice down because everybody's sleeping. It's like 12, 16 in the morning. But I could not let even an hour go by without talking about this episode. It was freaking perfect from beginning to the end. It featured everything that I like, starting with Queen Jenny, the Mill Sisters, some freaky ass possessions. It was just perfect. It was perfect. So... Oh my god, I can't, I, I like, I just want to sit here and be happy for like 17 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, however long this is going to last. I just want to sit here and smile. So, I mean, just, so this, the demon, or whatever, and Cetif was the it person in this episode, the it demon in the episode, the it evil, getting their shine for 42 minutes, walking around possessing people. They had shown up, I think in the last episode, they had shown up. Um, threatening Irving regarding Macy and so in this episode it was just more of the same except they made good on the threat that possession was freaky as heck first with her floating in the air then the you know the fast movement the choppy movements and then the face and then it changed you know and then she she broke through she was like daddy and then the demon took over again and you know pulled her back i was so scared that cynthia was gonna die i was like oh my god like I, the points where i was like i was i was cringing because i was waiting for him for the demon to snap her neck but she didn't die she made it and then and then but before that, I was like, are they really going to kill Macy? Because I was just, like, on the edge waiting for the worst to happen. I was like, are they really going to kill Macy? But, you know, she's a fighter. I even tried to talk to her while she was possessed. Like, I'm all out of order because this was just freaking perfect. We found out that poor Jenny has been dealing with possession for years. The voices she was seeing, which we were teased about, or not teased about, but told about, when we first met her, this hero, this hero has been getting herself committed on purpose to protect her sister. If you don't know that I stand for the damn Mill sisters, now you look at my face, look at my face. When I, when she, when they revealed that I just I was I was literally about to tear up. I was so in my feelings. So 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 she gets called by Abby and um Ichabod because because Abby found a video of Corbin dealing with the demon before and as soon as Corbin said I've known this girl for years. I was like, oh, it's Jenny. And it was Jenny. And she had never seen the tape before. And then she saw it and she was just hard for her because, you know, this whole time Abby's been thinking that Jenny hated her. You know, the, everyone thought that Jenny just had a bad attitude. No, the girl has been suffering because she's the one who never doubted what she never ran away from what they saw. Abby was the one who clung for the normal because, you know, we would, you know, understandably because she was facing people who didn't believe her she didn't want to be marked as crazy and all that stuff so she took the safe route she was personally tormented but jenny she was open but she was still tormented her soul because in the last episode the um moloch said that that abby was marked but jenny was marked too because she saw death or she saw Moloch, whatever. She saw the demon along with Abby. So her soul was marked too, which meant she was open to possession. And the demon and Cetif took advantage of that girl. Like, oh, just, oh. And then, you know, her knowing, it's not like, she doesn't remember what happens after she's possessed, but the demon still talks to her. You know, she still, re she, she retains memories of the demon's goal, which is to kill. I mean, to be told for all those years that, that her part to play in all of this was to kill her own sister she got herself committed and abby never knew this and then you know and, and ichabod realized it and oh my god jenny has been dealing with so much i just i love her so much and she's such a hero and she loves her sister so much and then um 
Abby finally found out thanks to Ichabod he told her and oh I just <sighs> and then the little competition thing they had going on when they were going to go get the lantern because that was how um and see, and see if was going to be defeated was with, was with a magic lantern that came from the French. So they were gonna go get it, and and Jenny was like, "I know where this is. I know where it is. I can get in. I can get out. Like I know all about it. I know these people. I, I used to get them weapons and all that stuff." Those guys look completely racist. I don't. They were nice to Jenny. They respect her. They respect that she's the best shot and all that stuff. But like, I don't trust a group of white men who think the end of the world is coming, and so they're stocking up on guns. They look racist. And so, so, yes. So they were in the car heading there, and Jenny's like, yeah, I'm gonna just break in. And Abby was like, uh, no, because if they catch you, something like that, you're gonna go to jail. And Jenny was looking at her like, this, this kind of a bigger thing going on here. But Abby was like, I'm gonna break in. Because remember, what was it that Ichabod said to her? An officer of the law who can pick locks. He said it much more smoother than I'm saying it because I've, I've forgotten the line. But he was like, an officer of the law with like a deviant past. Imagine the delinquency we could, we could get up to. So Abby has her own past. So so she said she gonna break in. And so Jenny is then, you know, coaching Abby through it. Through the compound place and meanwhile she jenny is like preparing because she knows they're gonna get caught she knows that these people are honest so she's gonna provide some backup so abby makes it to the door and then jenny starts to coach her on how to break in she's like i don't need you to coach me like psh, i'm better than you i'm breaking in and so and then abby was like beat your time it was just so freaking cute and so she breaks in she goes in with ichabod and she's like, you're going to have to reach it, Ichabod. Ichabod's like, hmm, and your generation's supposed to be taller than mine, on average. But then he can't reach it either. And Abby's looking at him like, mm -hmm. And so he gives her a boost, she gets it, and then they get it, and then they're on the way out, they get caught, as you would suspect. And Ichabod tries to appeal to the man, but he races, so he, I don't know. So, here comes Jenny with her two guns. Can we keep her with two guns? She looks freaking amazing with those two guns. She looks amazing. And so she's like, don't even play because you know I'm the best. <laughs> yes! Yes! So she gets them out. And she says to Abby, you may be faster at breaking in, but I'm better at breaking out. And Abby said no to the freaking favorite, favorite line of the episode. It was just so perfect. They're so freaking badass and they're so cool. I just, I love them. So... Meanwhile, oh, so, um, yeah, so, you know, I don't even need to go back to how Irving was questioning the guy, blah, blah, because that's just, like, slowing down my momentum. So, Lou got possessed. Lou got possessed, and he killed somebody. That man was like, Psh, salt, Psh, so weird, like, religion, it's so weird. And so Luke's like, yeah, why don't you go ahead and break it? And he was like, Psh, break. And Luke's like, well, not Luke. And C2's like, thank you. And so he killed him. So, you know, and see in the house and all that stuff. And so, yeah, that possession was so well done. And so then I, you know, and, and it gets to the point where the demon changes Mace's face completely. Just, ugh. And poor Irving is seeing this. You guys, Irving has such a great body. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just, I'm just in... I'm just in a mood. This episode was so freaking perfect. It's my favorite episode of the season. Favorite episode. He has such a great, like, his body shape, wide shoulders, you know, you know, and then just perfect. Just, he, and he's tall. Just beautiful. Beautiful. And so, so, you know, um, Irving called. Like, he didn't, do, he didn't do that whole thing where he tried to betray the team. No, he was up front, like, look, this thing's trying to get my daughter. What are we gonna do? And so... Um, he calls Abby and he's like, I'm gonna have to like, I'm heading to the thing to go get the, um, so he wanted to let them know so that they could get there before him because he, he believes in this fight, but he also wants to save his daughter. So he's trusting in Abby and Ichabod to get there before him and fix everything. And so they get the lantern, you know, team witness. So, um, they get there. Jenny walks in first. And the things like Jenny Mills, nine years ago, but so Jenny's twenty six. That's what I got. I got. That's what I got from that line. And so Jenny, poor Jenny, is like coming face to face with her 
past, like this entire like, you know, haunting, you know, this like, you know, just oh, persecution thingy. And so, so the demon's taunting her and all that stuff. Here comes Abby, like, you know, standing in front of her sister, like, you ain't gonna get her. You can't touch her anymore. Like, that's all over with. Here I am. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? And so, and so, um, the things like blah, blah, blah. And Jenny, and, um, Abby's like, you're a coward. You're a coward. Why do you have, to, why do you go after, you know, little kids? Cause Jenny was like 19 when he possessed her. She's like, why do you go after children and all that stuff? And so the thing was like, and then so Abby, Abby was like, here I am, here I am, and and Tiff was like, "We've got bigger plans for you, witness, and all that stuff." But it's like I thought you wanted to kill her. Why don't you make a move to kill her? And so, it was taunting Jenny, talking about some. You can still hear the voice. You can still feel the evil. You still want to kill your sister. And poor Jenny is like trying not to like let it get to her and all that stuff. She's clearly disturbed, and so it runs to her, but it's blocked by the salt because they had already because salt stops it. And so, and so here comes Ichabod out of the closet or whatever. And so he closes the salt circle and then he holds the lantern and then he chants his chant. His, you know, whatever. The demon in seats if you're going to go back to hell. And so the demon got sucked out, but not before like pontificating. It was like, you know, evil has already, you know, it's out, it has already begun. We're going to win. All that stuff just freaking scary. And poor Cynthia. Poor Cynthia seeing all of this going on. She's like, what the hell's going on, Irving? You know, our daughter, where is our baby girl? And all this stuff. And then Irving is like, so it wasn't him. I mean, he blamed himself for the for the accident. But Cynthia was like, "It's not you. You keep tre treating us like we're glass. Like we're gonna break. Like you need to protect us. Like you need to blah blah blah. We're strong and all that stuff." And so Irvin was like, when he was talking to um, Macy, he was like, "You're strong, just like your mother." I was like, "Yes." It was just so freaking. It was just such a great episode, such a perfect episode, like perfect on all fronts. And so they defeat the demon, and Jenny's like. You know, weight lifted. And, you know, Macy is back. She's like, Mom, Dad. And Cynthia and Irving run to her. And, 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 um, Jenny seeing that, you know, Macy was saved. You know, someone was saved in a way that she wasn't. You know, Macy was saved in a way that she wasn't. Macy, she, Macy's gonna remember this, but it won't haunt her to the. I feel like it, it's not gonna haunt Macy. To the, you know, to the point where it's, ha where it's haunted Jenny. And so, Jenny's like standing there. And then Abby goes to her and hugs her. And, and Jenny cries. And then Abby's holding her tight. And then, you know, it's like kind of like stilted, stilted. And then she puts her arms around her sister. And then Ichabod's looking at them. Oh, he's And Ichabod is like a stand for them. Because he's like, oh, sh you know, all this bickering you guys do. It's because you love each other. And you want to protect each other. You would do anything for each other. I'm like, yes, 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 they would. And so... And so then to end the episode, Washington's Bible. And so Ichabod figured out a solution to, you know, see the invisible ink, whatever. It says December 8th, 1970, not 19, 1877 or 79, something like that. It's behind me, but I don't want to turn around to look at it. But anyways, the point is that December 8th, um, Washington died on December 4th, so how did he write it? You know, four days after he died. We're going to find out. So, so yeah. So, that was it. Um, That was it. <laughs> Perfect episode. We started off with Ichabod and some skinny-ass jeans. Skinny legs for days. It was just a mess. Like, I actually prefer him to be in his, like... oh, Because I'm so used to... Like, I'm not in a hurry for him to start wearing regular people clothes. I'm not. <laughs> it's the least of my concerns. So... That was the episode. Just perfection. Fave, fave, fave. I, I, I'm not even going to think about whether or not an episode is going to beat it going forward. Episode 11. Two more to go. I'm making it. The real success will be if I can upload all of these before the season premieres. My slow ass internet. I'm working on it. But that's it, you guys. Thank you for watching me. I just... I... Ugh. Perfect episode, okay? I'm gonna go because I gotta go to sleep because I got work tomorrow, okay? Bye! Thank you for watching!